part three, guys, of the log series. So. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, make sure you go and look at the log clean and the stability in rack and dip position video, because I'm not going to talk about these in this video. We're going to purely pick up from where we left off in the last video. So we've mastered the rack stability and the dip mechanic, and we're going to talk about the driving extension and the actual push press itself. I'm not going to delve into split jerks, just push press I'm going to be coaching today. So if you are finding that on your dip and drive, your elbows are dropping, it's important to note this isn't an issue with the drive and extension. It's an issue with the actual dip itself and the stability and rack position. So if you're in that position where when you're applying force into the log, you feel like your elbows are dropping, make sure you go back and, and apply the skills and rules in the stability and rack position video because that's going to fix that problem, not the cue of pushing elbows up. So fix the stability in rack and the elbow dropping issue will go away. So I'm assuming you've got a vertical dip and your stability in rack is weightless. You've got a weightless rack position and good vertical dip. So we're going to go into the drive and extension. So when, I, when we did the log clean video, I said that unlike weightlifting, we have hips, then knees and ankles, not a simultaneous extension. But in the log, we are going to use a proper weightlifting style triple extension where we simultaneously do hips, knees and ankles and we create upwards force through the log. When we're in this dip position, we need to think about coming up and squeezing the glute. That's going to help us keep a neutral torso. We're going to extend through the quads and we're going to get onto our tiptoes, so extension for the ankles as well. The most common mistake strong men make with the push press is the heel is glued to the floor. I always say to people, just try and jump as high as you can where your heel leaves the floor last. Your heel leaves the floor first and then you go into extension on your tiptoes and you'll extend upwards. So you need to apply that same rule when you do the log push press. So make sure you get into that ankle extension because you will lose so much power, honestly. It's quite substantial, really. So the one thing to take away from this video is that final bit of extension for the ankle because it is so common in strongmen that they have these heels glued to the floor and you're just losing so much power. So make sure we get a nice vertical dip, we're extending through and we're going vertically through the log. We need to make sure we go through it. We're not going into the log, we're going through it. Once we've got this um, push press mechanic down, the main cue that we're going to work on today and that we're going to change that's different to what weightlifters apply to the barbell is we're going to put our, keep our head back and not put it through. With a log press, when you do the push press, it doesn't go as high as a barbell. You'll tend to find that an efficient push presser will get the log just about over his head maybe. That's why you see a lot of people fail a log here. The head's through and the log's just above the head and they end up resting it on the head. So we don't want to go in that position. It's a really inefficient position to put our head through and be in this 90-90 joint angle where we've just got triceps to, to, to lock out. And the tricep is in the biomechanically weakest position at that 90-90 joint angle. So we don't want to put our head through too soon. So we're going to push the log and what we're going to do instead is we're going to push our spine backwards into a little bit of extension and we're going to actively look at the log and we're going to have our head behind the log and we're going to cock our elbows in and then we're going to be able to press out and we're going to be able to activate our triceps, our delts and our pecs simultaneously instead of just loading the tricep when we got our head through. And this is going to create a much more powerful position. Now, as we um, get into this position where we're going to press from, we need to make sure that our head stays back all the way until we lock out. So as your triceps lock out, your head wants to come through at the same time, which means that you'll never be in that position where your head is through and the log is just above your head. If you do a log push press correct, you should never have to save it by putting it on your head because you'll either fail it back into rack or you'll lock it out. You won't have the opportunity to rest on top of your head. So if, you, if you're ever doing that, you're in the wrong position. The best drill I like to do to teach this is to use an empty log or a really light log and do the push press and land in that position where the log's just over your head and keep your head back and cock your elbows in, create loads of force and isometrically hold the log in that position. Now, when you're holding it there, bring your head through so that we're in that position here, 90-90 joint angle, head under the log, and instantly, I guarantee you, it will feel a lot weaker and you will struggle to hold the log there. Now, bring your head back again and put yourself into that position where you're extended and um, you'll feel much, much stronger and you'll be able to lock out the log. This is really beneficial as well because you're able to also adjust your assistance exercises to strengthen this position. For example, it's easily mimicked via a high incline bench press. So instantly, by changing this position, you get this great back supported 
low recovery demanding assistance exercise you can add in that will correlate really well with your uh, log press. So if you in increase your strength in that position with this, at this angle of your back and the incline bench, you're going to be able to increase your strength on the log as well. So it really does open the doors to a lot more assistance exercises as well. Cues to go through here, uh, we've mastered the dip, we've got that straight, we're going to go into triple extension, we're going to keep our heads behind the log and we're going to lock out first and then bring our head through just as the triceps lock out, it's almost simultaneously. As your triceps lock out, your head comes through. I want you to be able to watch the log all the way to lock out. If you can't watch the log all the way to lock out, if you're looking straight in front of you, you're putting your head through too soon and you're going to be missing the most powerful positions. And trust me, I talked about this on British Strongman podcast. I probably had 30, 40 messages of people apply it and instantly gain, I think one person did the th two rep max for like three sets of three. Someone got like a log PB the next day. They just literally applied it and got PB. Trust me, it is really beneficial. Now, if you want to just cut the video off here, cut it off and apply the cues, but a little bit of a history for you as to where this came from, because I think this is interesting, right? Because everybody applies push press technique to the log that has come from weightlifters and we always need to remember that a log is a lot different to a barbell and using the cues and things that have been built around the decades of weightlifting and applying them to log seems like a good idea but we need to take into account the fact that the log is such so much bigger in diameter that the weight is slightly in front of you so like I talked about on the dip video, you're not able to open your hip and knees as much as you are on a log. You're not able to load that hip extension on the push press as much because if you open that hip, you're going to hinge. So we need to get a little bit more knee tracking forward. We need to open the hip. We need to track the knee forward a little bit as well. And we need to get this perfect blend in the middle. So the cues on log and barbell are slightly different. So when we go into the push press on a barbell, you tend to find that it goes a lot higher. Um, because you're able to use a little bit of oscillation and there's a much more efficient bar path um, with, with the barbell. So it means that the, the bar will go like way over your head, which means getting your head through quickly, you're in this strong position to lock out. You're not here, you're quite high. So the head through cue on barbell does work quite well for a weightlifter or using a barbell push press. But on a log, we need to push press the log like it's a log, it's, it's a different uh, movement. Now, if you look at Graham Hicks, Big Z, um, Aaron Page, um, who else? Even uh, Rob Kearney, even though he split jerks, all have their head back until they lock out. Now, when I first started Strongman, I remember training with Hicksy and um, Paddy and a few other people that were great loggers, and they all kept the head back. And I, I kept applying this head through cue because I was so obsessed with reading and learning and everybody was telling me to put my head through. And I kept thinking, they're just freaks and they're doing it wrong, but they're lifting big weight. And then as I got older and I learned more about uh, the different lifts and started, started thinking outside the box a little bit, I realized that Hicksy and Paddy and these other big log pressers they were just doing what felt best and applying to the to the lift what their body was you know giving them the feedback of this is the strongest position instead of applying the knowledge they're being told put your head through put your head through they're going well no it just feels better so sometimes i think we can overcomplicate these lifts and for me it took a good couple of years away from my log training where i was obsessed with putting my head through and as soon as i applied and learned to keep it back and change my position a lot it literally blew my log up about 25 kilos in a year and i was already a, a pretty decent logger you know i was a british records under 80 and close to him under 90 so i was already a good logger and i added all that on top so trust me it's, it works so well it's such a great card to have in your back pocket to play and um, i really do think that it is going to be the best thing that you guys do for your log whether you're a push presser or a split jerker keeping your head back until lockout will really help you improve your log